Good day, everybody. I have to say, it's been such an experience watching the Rings of Power. One theory that was solidified in the trailer for the show, that was confirmed for me at least, in the travesty of an eighth episode. The Rings of Power is not the Lord of the Rings, nor is it an acceptable fantasy show. Amazon has spent the most money anyone's ever seen spent on a series and have concocted nothing from it. The writing is the most bat-screechingly awful trash I've ever seen on television, polished with amateurish poetry designed to sound intelligent, but instead coming off as disingenuous and lame. The direction is disjointed and lazily edited. The costume and set design is extremely unimaginative and cost-limited cringe, which in some cases is the worst mistake Amazon could have made. Numenor is a perfect example of what not to do when trying to bring the Tolkien equivalent of Atlantis to life. Reused set pieces devoid of creativity and overabundance of maps and infighting politics that no one has bothered to talk about, and far too much talk about the sea never being wrong. This is $30 million per episode at work, baby! All the actors whisper their lines in order to perfectly capture the feel of the Jackson films, but instead of winning Emmys for their performances, they'll be winning meme awards, which won't get old anytime soon. Yeah, it really is a chuckle, isn't it? I know, this show is really bad. Believe me when I tell you, there will never be a financial or cinematic failure quite like this ever again. Let's go through some of the reasons that this episode was the final nail in the coffin for what is without a doubt a complete and total desecration of J.R.R. Tolkien's works, starting with the biggest eyesore of the series itself, Galadriel. Holder of meaningless titles, torturer of orc babies, planter of feet, placer of men, simp of Sauron, and last but not least, forgetter of Celeborn. This girl boss is hot for fixable Halbrand and goes out of her gosh darned way to remind you of how awesome Kate Blanchett is, one episode at a time. The writers take an indefinite amount of liberties with this character, including making her both the person that comes up with the idea of the Rings of Power and is the sole proprietor of the Rise of Heisenbrand. Galadriel is both the cause and the solution because of course she is. Amazon has gone full on woke with this show, installing their strong female characters into roles that steal all of the men's moments of glory all of the time. In some cases, that is their only purpose for existing at all, apart from balancing out the male to female ratio that these weirdos in Hollywood fetishize about. Look at Isildur's sister, for example. No, no, look at her as a character, and how she sits all creepy in the king's room and paints him as he's lying there dying. You're probably wondering how it fits into the overall story. It doesn't really, it's just a filler scene to give Isildur's sister a reason to exist and be given randomly awesome and seemingly important plot involvement to uncover a seeing stone by forcing the king to lay in bed for hours while a bunch of young women have an art competition around his bedside. Wow, so cool, so Lord of the Rings. Since we're on the subject of achievements, J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay have a lot to be proud of. They tackled difficult and big-budget subject matter and failed so spectacularly that they turned away not just Tolkien fans, but audiences in general, which is tough to do. I'm not sure what it feels like to be an eternal stain on the dirty pair of underwear that is Amazon, but I imagine it's not very fun for them. Also, if you're aiming to have fun while watching this show, I turn your attention to the insufferable stranger slash Gandalf storyline where the showrunners refuse to allow the wizard to have any meaningful verbal opinion of his own. Until the end of the season, at the end of the episode, where he suddenly speaks in English and in full sentences but merely copies Gandalf lines verbatim? Always follow your nose, Nori. What? You hungry? Yes, for human flesh. Finally, we see more of the priests that have no purpose but to be throwaway villains who do nothing new or engaging and are shortly after introduction CGI'd into ghosts to show off how good the stranger is. But that's not before we're presented an action sequence where the slap happy hardfoots hop out of bushes and perform incredibly idiotic attacks that do nothing to the enemy but does manage to get the old guy killed, which I don't really care about since he is likely responsible for the deaths of countless Harfoots due to starving them to death alone in the woods without help. Anyway, lighter note. Honestly, I'm surprised to find how many people on Earth are willing to sit through this pile of fabulousness. 
If I sound insane, it's really the show's fault. None of these plot lines make sense, nor do they care to, and the lack of accountability paints a picture of panic and madness behind the scenes. Guys, don't worry, next season will be all about Walter White Sauron. What? We have one more trick to play, the ultimate Sauron reveal. Which just so happens to be the twist that we all saw coming since before the show even aired. Heisenbrand? I mean, Halron? Sarbrand? I don't know. It's that guy. And guess what? J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay wholeheartedly, legitimately believe they fooled audiences with this one. Just like they think they fooled us into believing that Galadriel would trust Halbrand up until the point he enters her kingdom, immediately distrusts him because he's happy to be there, does a quick catacomb search and discovers the ultimate secret. <laughs> the King of the Southlands line was broken, Halbrand was lying, duh. I find it so incredible that mere human viewers who only lived just short of a century figured out who Sauron was before Galadriel did, and she lived for thousands of years. Keen are the eyes of the elves, except when they can't find the one thing they're looking for. I was here before the breaking of the first silence, and now here's a vision of your husband Celeborn. Brother Finrod. Brother Finrod. And then Sauron and Galadriel scream at each other on a raft, and then Galadriel drowns the end. Until Elrond pulls her from the two-foot deep lake. Galadriel, who did this to you? Halbrand? Why? Can't tell you. Yep, she keeps her knowledge of Halbrand being Sauron a secret from everyone, even though her motivation for the entirety of this disaster up until this point, if she ever had any motivation in the first place, was vengeance against Sauron. This show is really something. But Dread, why are you not mentioning Arendir, Bronwyn, Theo, Isildur, or Durin and his two children that no one has ever seen? Well, that's because, like Durin's children, these characters no longer exist. They served their purposes in the previous episodes, and so the creators have decided we've seen enough of them, and we won't be seeing them in the finale or for two years after that. Don't be sad, Lord of the Rings fans. At least J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay were nice enough to give us a copy-paste ending directly from the Fellowship of the Ring. Look, instead of Frodo and Sam walking towards Mordor, it's like Sauron walking towards Mordor. And then instead of a really nice song playing, we'll have a really dumb song start to play as the screen goes black. We're already seeing a glimpse of the aftermath that will follow this TV show's completion, and it will be absolutely glorious. I want to be there to see it all go down, but hopefully not before I see you. Have a beautiful day. Like and share this video. Subscribe and click that notification bell. I look forward to seeing you all again next time.